All right, this is kind of fun. Let's go look at the Coachella stages for the past 22 years or so, since 2001. There's been a tremendous difference between what um, the festival started with and what it is now and its evolution. Uh, I've put together pictures from various years. I've been at almost every Coachella since the very beginning, but I missed a couple because I was on tour. Let's get into it. All right, here's the main stage from Coachella 2001. This is the first year that Rat Sound provided audio for it, and uh, we've done every one since. And uh, this was a rat trap system, six wide, four deep. On top are four horn packs. Then there's the six wide, three deep rat traps below. You can see the horn packs are a little deeper than the um, boxes below for the long throw. Years ago, I made these graphics uh, for each of the system configurations of the rat trap. And there you can see what we had. Here's a shot of the monitor position. We can see the PM4000 monitor board and then a couple more of them there off to the left with this big pile of old school analog, the Brook Siren third octave EQs and the analog racks. So let's switch back and look at the main stage again so we get a good reference point to what happens next year in 2002. Here we switch to a VDOS rig. The arrays are 13 boxes deep and for side hangs, now that we have a line array and we need to extend the cupboard further, uh, we have EAW850 boxes, I believe hanging there in a four pack on either side. Here we're looking at stage left and we can see the side fills are rat subs with Schubert boxes on top of them. It's those double 15 two inch double bullet. Super cool. Looks like Dave Grohl made his way out there to hang out at front of house with us. Um, gives him the shot of the sound system there. And here we're looking at uh, some Yamaha PM4000 consoles. Now at this show, I mixed a band, I think it was Beck, uh, that I was mixing here. And look at them very seriously staring at what's going on. And let's go back to look at the main PA and get ready for what 2003 looks like. The main clusters are now 14 boxes deep, and the side clusters are matching line arrays with four boxes deep of VDOS and a six hang deep of DVDOS below. And the subs, those look like ATK subs, which we sub hired a bunch of uh, gear from at the time when we had a lot of gear out on tour and needed to cover the gear for the festival. Let's take a look at front of house from the stage and check out all the people there. Look at the size of the crowd. And here's a picture I took of Iggy Pop who is absolutely awesome, and it was a great show. All right, back to the 2003 stage so that we can see the comparison to 2004. Now, 2004, the stage got quite a bit taller and bigger, as you can see. Here we went to 15 VDOSC over 3D VDOSC and asymmetrical side clusters. On the near side, we see 4 VDOSC over 3D VDOSC, and on the other side, there's more, but I don't remember how many they are. This is due to the outdoor theater stage being close to stage left where that smaller cluster is and having more coverage and more people to the right. And this was all complemented by 48 rat double 18 subs stacked in front and under the stage there. This picture came up and this is Nick the Fly who teched for many years on Chili Peppers with me, Michael, who does front of house for Jack Johnson, Grandpa, and also Craig Overbay, who makes his Weezer and used to mix all kinds of cool bands like Helmet and awesome stuff. And looking at the 2004 stage, look at the side wings where the outside clusters are hung. As we go into 2005, it's changed completely. The um, outer areas are now covered and encased in a black top. We got that kind of triangular look there. The PA is about the same as it was the year before. 
uh, just not the asymmetrical side clusters. Also look at front of house. See that sign that says Coachella stage? That's actually in the worst possible position because we spent a lot of time making that front of house mix position so that you could see through it and uh, the different departments didn't talk to each other. Uh, fortunately, this is during setup and uh, this was corrected before the doors opened. And we'll look at that next. Here we can see with that sign removed that uh, people from the back can now see through front of house. This is one of the beauties of having front of house mix position on very low risers. And something that we paid attention to, I brought it to Coachella when I mixed chili peppers, this is how I was setting up at festivals. And um, they started the slanted roof and then over the years have done major improvements to it. But this is the first incarnation of um, being able to improve sight lines with the uh, front of house mix riser setup. Here's a quick look at one of the predictions I found in the files from back then. We just had the two delay clusters and you can see the posts on the stage with the PA and the center cluster as well. I got to go up on one of the big lifts and take some pictures. So here's a shot of the stage from the side uh, early in the day. One of my primary gigs at Coachella is uh, sound and noise mitigation and making sure that the stages don't interfere with each other and off-site. And in order to fulfill that purpose, of course, I needed to have the Denaus Esnalembum, which um, I drove around in case there was any issues that needed to be attended to. And the last look at the 2005 stage as we get into the 2006. Now, we don't see a lot of changes between these two years. In going through the old pictures and digging all this up, I found that I actually wasn't at this Coachella festival at all because I was out with Chili Peppers um, here doing a NASCAR gig back east. It was set up in the middle of the track there. There's the stage and the PA hanging, and I got to sit in one of the NASCAR cars marked with the chili peppers there in the back. I took this picture, showed Scott, he wanted to get in, and he, you have to climb into the window. What I failed to tell him is you're supposed to take the steering wheel off before you get in, and I had much delight in watching him wedge himself in there. I wish I had a photo of that. So we are definitely up close to the uh, action there for NASCAR, and then off to do Saturday Night Live. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this stage as we roll into next year. So 2007, I'm out on a world tour with Red Hot Chili Peppers, and Chili Peppers are headlining Coachella. So the entire touring system was available to be supplied to the festival. And that was the year I was traveling with double PA systems. So as you can see, there's two hangs of 15 deep with three DVs underneath side by side. One hang dedicated to drums and vocals and the other hang dedicated to bass and guitar. The ability to push the vocals very loud and clean and then drive the bass and guitar and other instruments without um, blurring them it was just so wonderful. And looking back at front of house, the roof has gotten higher there and the size of the audience has increased substantially. You can see the stage has grown in size and it's flat on top. It doesn't have those gables like the other one did the year before. As we transition, look at the height of the PA versus the stage. And now look at the height of the PA versus the stage. You can see how much that stage has grown because the PA has stayed the same height. Looking at front of house, we can see that we're starting to get into that digital transition where the analog Midas H3000 boards and then the Yamaha boards are being outlaid there. Festival boards are starting to go digital and um, both are on site. It hasn't um, switched over yet. And here I am in my emergency service vehicle prepared to deal with any issues that may arise. 
Now, this is the year that Roger Waters played. There's the big pig that somehow escaped. And Jason, who works for us, convinced one of the graffiti artists to spray paint a rat, uh, the company logo, on one of the feet of the pig. And um, so that Roger Waters pig floated in the sky with a rat on it. It was kind of cool. Look at where the outer hangs are. And watch what happens to this new one. See, now there's outriggers on the stage. So the outer hangs have been moved outside of the stage area. So they're not behind the video screens. Gives them more freedom with the video. And look at the main PA. It's now filling up all that empty space with this taller PA. uh, Fitting into the taller stage. This is the year that Rat Sound bought the K1 rig. And... These boxes hang 24 deep instead of just 15 deep like the VDOS did. So this is a 23 box deep hang with 3D VDOS underneath making up the weight of the 24th box. The top eight boxes are K1SB, the low frequency only version, so that the lows have a very long line for the 15s and then the mids and highs of a shorter line. The graphic prediction uh, from the sound vision software so that we can predict what's happening kind of shows a sub array as well. On the left you can see there's some bowing or waving to the system. It's kind of bowing in and out. That's not supposed to do that and was an issue that uh, the company was unaware of. This is a very early deployment of this system. Since then it's been resolved and you can see it's dealt with there in this next photo. But it was an interesting thing to find out. All right, so let's go ahead and roll into 2010. Sound system-wise, the main difference here is the side hangs have gone to a Kudo. I think it's a dozen deep on the Kudo, the 12-inch based um, version. And we can see another view of the stage here from out in the audience. Uh, That's Hutch. Uh, Queens of the Stone Age he mixed for years and lots of other great bands. I just saw him recently mixing Pixies. And here's an overhead view of the festival as it gets bigger. All right, let's go ahead and roll into 2011. And here we see the stage has jumped in size again. It's gotten much taller. And now the PA keeps getting littler looking, even though it's staying the same size. I got asked to mix Paul Van Dyck, and I decided I would do such on a tiny little analog console and had a great time. This also was the year that there was the Big Four, a festival that happened the weekend after the single weekend of Coachella with Metallica, Slayer, Megadeth, and Anthrax. It's always a pleasure to see Big Mick, a good friend I've known for many years. First time I met Big Mick was when Rat Sound brought in a bunch of PA gear to the Troubadour for Metallica. And years later, I ran into him and he came up to me and goes, Oh, you're the rat. You had brought in so much PA. It was like a starfish stuck to my face. It was so loud. We reminisce every time I see him and chat about all kinds of cool, fun sound stuff. And we're going to switch gears again as we roll into 2012. And here we can see that we've taken out the Kudo side hangs and switched them to VDOS. So the main PA from the old original system is almost as big as the side hang we're seeing in front of us. A pair of Avid consoles as they're gaining in popularity and a big Midas board over there and little Midas submixer as well as the digital conversion continues. Let's go ahead and roll into next year. The Kudo side hangs are back. The main PA stayed pretty stable and um, we can see a pretty similar stage here. The reason the VDOS are gone is because we needed them for delay clusters as we can see here we've really started to ramp up the delay cluster deployment at the festival because of the expanding amount of um, coverage needed as well as a way to mitigate off-site sound without continuously increasing the size of the main PA and blasting people 
And here's Chili Peppers headlining again, where I mixed another show there. And now that the festival switched to two weekends back to back, after that big four, they decided to have the same repeat festival. Here's Front of House for Chili Peppers. I always like to have Front of House filled with people and friends and family and kind of have uh, the feel of the audience be kind of in the same environment as a listener uh, as I'm mixing So a crowded front of house was a big plus for me. So we'll take a look at 2013, the side hangs and the look of the stage in 2014. And we can see that K2 rig has been released. And we have K2 side hangs and K2 under the K1. The K2 combines with the K1 better because it's got that open horn. It's got the same uh, high frequency type element. And the DVDOS never combined quite as well. Plus, you get more energy there. And so this is really getting to be a refined system as new technology and new boxes are released. It was great to see MC, who mixes Muse, out there and his wonderful analog setup he was running at the time uh, with the XL4. What a great, great um, setup this is. Here's a shot of the Stagecoach stage being constructed. Until this year, in 2023, every year the Coachella stage was broken down and the Stagecoach stage was built not too far away. Another thing you'll see grow from year to year is the size and weight of those video screens and the resolution If you go back and look, the video resolution was fairly low or very low, and it gets higher and higher pixel counts and uh, larger and larger screens as the time moves forward. And it's a windy area there, so the strength of the stage has to be increased significantly in order to handle that. Here's a peek at the subarray with the four clusters per side of four, and then the four clusters of two in uh, cardioid mode, and also kind of delayed arc as well. Uh, We use that for quite a few years. This is my good friend, Ronnie Kimball, who is surf buddy and friend for many years. He mixes Bad Religion and a lot of other cool bands. And here's a shot from the stage looking back at the audience delay clusters, and a big caterpillar out there as well. You can see Mr. Bones, who is the official treat inspector for the festival, with his credentials here. As we move along into the next year, take a look at the video screens and look at those video screens. And it is a dramatic change Now we really have the basis of the current Coachella stage formed where you've got um, everything's functional and not ugly things that are structural in the way. Um, Scott the Lampy once said to me, if it's beautiful and functional, it will stand the test of time. And that holds true in just about everything. So we see here the screen in the back. Watch what happens as we go into the next year. And you see that it's completed uh, the full wrap. And while this is going on in the audio department, the delay clusters and the other stages as well have continued to expand and be refined for improved coverage, as well as delay poles being sunk into the ground rather than scaf or any other weird ugly delay cluster thing they've got these beautiful delay poles that we'll see front of house continues to be refined as well and this is now a collapsing front of house riser it's been up there for quite a while it's very low to the ground so people can see over it and those overhangs uh, have a skin that can be removed and they fold down so that it completely removes the uh, block from the view And here's a look at the Stagecoach stage, which uh, is different, surprisingly, than the Coachella stage. There's a different set of priorities, and it tends to be higher or taller and um, has a different format. Do you see that opening in the stage there on stage left and here on stage left and right? 
those panels actually move up and down and allow large set pieces to be put on stage and then they close back down but don't come all the way to the ground so that people can get in and out and um, smaller stuff can be loaded easily. Here's a shot of the stage during the performance early in the evening and a picture of the layout that we're using for this year with the two end fire sub setups per side and then the four in the middle. For Stagecoach Festival, it's a seated event for the near area and these are the chairs and it's a different layout. All right, a last look at 2018 before we roll into 2019. And we can see that we have pretty much the same setup here. Even though we don't see major changes to the main stage, the entire festival is constantly evolving in many ways. And one of the things we really worked on was wind clamps, such that the PA clusters were rigidly attached to the poles, the delay poles, and no longer would they swing in the wind. To the best of my knowledge, no sound system manufacturer offers this feature, and these wind clamps were custom designed and engineered by Rat Sound, and we're really happy with the results. Let's take a look at the stage and the magnitude of the amount of information that can be used on those screens and the look of the band. For the next stage transition, we skip two years due to COVID and get into 2022, where the focus of the upgrades were in the Sahara tent and delay clusters and numerous other surprises throughout the festival. Here's another angle uh, up closer looking at the stage. And these are the delay poles. They're um, various types and sizes that um, we can mount the speakers on throughout the festival. And here's a showtime view from front of house with the lid removed. And once they've taken the top off, you can see really well from behind as well as from front of house. And it gives this beautiful open view. All right, so for our last transition into 2023, we're going to look at the biggest change we've made in a while. Look at the sound system, how high up it is. It's been raised up above the screens. The amount of work and engineering involved in lifting it up there without something ugly like a crane that you might see at some other events or some other solution that's not integrated into the stage was extremely challenging and really fun. Here's a view of the stage, a graphic view of it, uh, so we can see that it, what the intent was like before we got it all dialed in. And here's a view of, of the result that we were able to achieve. The side hangs aren't up in the air yet. We're still setting up. And here's a showtime view uh, during the day uh, where we can see the screen continuous. And we can take a look at the clamps and bracing. We've got wind clamps and bracing up there as well to hold the PA system in place. Since the PA was up higher, we increased the cabinet count to make up for the energy of it being a bit farther away. This is 16K1 with 2K1SB above them and 10K1SB behind to get some cardioid and more energy without having the array so long, as well as another 8K2 pointed down for infill, increasing the box count to 36 up from 24 per side just for the main hang clusters, plus side hangs, plus infills, plus subs, plus loads of delay clusters. Um, an overhead view from the prediction software showing the various delay clusters and the main stage as well as the secondary stage, which we see here, uh, which was used this year for Skrillex, Fortet, and Fred again on the closing night DJ set. Here's one last view from way back there. And... Um, Thank you for joining. I hope you enjoyed this rundown of the Coachella main stages and the evolution over the years. It's really mind-boggling how much it's grown and changed, and I'm excited and can't wait to see what comes next as the new projects come to fruition 
and keep pushing things farther and farther to the best they can be.